Glory to God forever. Jesus is Lord. He said there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby men can be saved. That is Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. There is no other name given among men whereby men can be saved except the name of Jesus. For there is no other name given among men that can secure their salvation except the name of Jesus. Are you born again? If you are born again, you have a special privilege to be reconciled back to the Father. Salvation brings a reconciliation between you and the Almighty. That God will not just be God to you alone like he is to every creation. But beyond that, he becomes a father to you. That's what salvation means. He becomes a father. He becomes a father to you, which is your source, your sustainer, your preserver. It means he's there to secure you, he's there to protect you, he's there to guarantee your sustenance, he's there to sustain every good thing he has done for you. That's the meaning of Father. That you are a child of God once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. It leads you beyond just a creation of God to a higher dimension of relationship, which means you are a child of God. The scripture said, as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the child of God. Glory. It's interesting to be called a child of God. You must not forget that. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Don't think small. Don't look down on yourself. Brace up and remember that you are a child of God. Mm, don't forget your identity. You are a child of the almighty God. You are a child of the healer. The one that have capacity to heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases. The one that have power for deliverance. The deliverer of the lawful captive. The one whose word never fall to the ground. The God who speaketh a thing and it cometh to pass. The God who is almighty who holds the heart of those in authority in his hand, and he can turn it to whichever way that pleases him, the God that can bring down the Pharaoh and pull down the wall of Jericho and pack the sea asunder, is your daddy, is your father. Oh, Carlos Gade, don't forget the fatherhood of God. No, don't forget it. You must remember that this almighty God by whom all things were created, the one who is, who was, and is to come, the everlasting God, the God who is merciful, powerful, this almighty God, the almighty God, omnipresent, omniscience, omnipotent God is your daddy. Is your don't forget, you see, the prodigal son, as bad as the situation was. As terrible as the situation was, how did he recover? He recovered by knowing that this rich man, this man who had more than enough, is his father. He said, my father has so much, and I cannot be here languishing. My father has so much. Even the servants in his house, they have so much to eat and to give out. How can I, a legitimate son, be suffering in a strange land? Ah! He said, I will return back and go to my father, apologize to him, and get into the system again. Brothers and sisters, your point of recovery is knowing who this God is. That is not just God. No, he's a father. He's your daddy. He has begotten you he has adopted you into sonship because you gave your heart to Jesus. You confessed your sins. You repented of them. You don't desire to go to them again. You want to please him. You want to serve him. You have submitted your life to him. 
as the owner of your life, you are preparing to make heaven, to be with him forever, is your father. <laughs> you know, when things get dry, and you just remember who your father is, the prodigal son was in a terrible situation. All he needed to do to recover was to ponder on the integrity of his father. I want to beg you in the name of the Lord, spend today for some few hours, just ponder on this God that the whole world bow down to worship, that the host of angels worship 24-7. The God who broke down Egypt, killed all the firstborn in the whole land of Egypt in one night. The God that vomited water out of the rock, parted the sea asunder. The God that clothed Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years and made their shoe to grow in their legs. And their cloth didn't tear for 40 years. The God that made them to escape from slavery with silver and gold. That gave them favor. That anyone they ask for gold, they gave them easily because God spoke favor. That God is your daddy. Ponder on him. Meditate on this God who have accepted you as a son. Because you accepted his son, Jesus Christ. As the one that shed his blood for you. Because you accepted his son. Jesus Christ as the one that shed his blood for your redemption. Because you accepted his son Jesus. He has not accepted you as a son. Don't forget the fatherhood of God. That's why Jesus when he was teaching the prayer. Uh, the Lord's prayer. He said when you want to pray. You must begin by knowing that this God you are talking to. Is not just the almighty God. It's your personal daddy. It's your daddy. It's your father. Uh, when you want to pray, say, Our Father, Father, Father. All through the life of Jesus, he addressed God as Father, 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 Righteous Father, Holy Father. To Jesus, God was Father. And you better begin to ponder on this Almighty God being your Father, your Daddy. He gave an illustration one day, Jesus teaching. He said, How many of you wicked fathers that when your child will ask for bread, you will go and look for stone, stone, and give him, say, I think you want bread, take stone. How many of you will do that? As bad as your child may be, will you give him stone when he asks for bread? Will you give him scorpion? Will you give him snake when he asks for fish? Said, if you wicked people cannot do that, how much more the merciful father will he not give you that which you desire? You got to believe God. You got to have faith that this God is a giving God. James 1 verse 5. He said, God is a giving God that gives without fault finding. His nature is to give. That's why even the unbelievers, they have from him. Even though they have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, because of the nature of God as Father, a giving God. I declare in the name of the Lord that in this season, that which you have been demanding from God from January, that have eluded you. In this season of recognizing once again the fatherhood of God, may it be delivered to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The prodigal son recovered by analyzing again the status of the father, the weight of the father. So, you see, your point of recovery. Is meditating on the capacity of God. Spend time, look through the Bible stories. Browse through the testimonies of people, of what God has done. Read testimony of outstanding move of God. 
and tally it to you that this God that did all this is your father. He has owned you as a son. Remember that forever. My father. My father. Can you imagine just browsing through the chronicles of God's performances? And I call him my father. Think about the miracles he did in Egypt. Then you say my father. Think about his signs and wonder he did in the wilderness and call it my father. Think about all that he did during the time of Christ and even beyond in the apostolic era. It's your father. Think about all that is today created by this God who is my father. There's a misery about father. And you call father. You know, Elijah was being transported and translated to heaven before he did the school of the prophets. There are two categories of people. The crowd, they knew Elijah as our master. And they told Elisha, our master will be taken away from our head today. Mm, said, I'm aware. They knew one part of God as master. But they didn't discover the other part as father. The fatherhood of your mentor. But when Elijah was to go, Elisha have come to know Elijah. Not just as a teacher, as a mentor. He has come to appreciate the fatherhood of Elijah. While other members of the school were calling Elijah, master, master, teacher, teacher. He caught a revelation of Elijah. And as he was taken away. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the must speak it. He has been meditating on the fatherhood of Elijah. He has been meditating and relating with him, not just as a teacher, but as father, daddy. When you discover your pastor, not just as a pastor, but as father, something mysterious begins to happen. There's a release from him to you. And suddenly... As he was taken off, he shouted, My father! My father! So, something left Elijah and dropped for Elisha. He called the matter. <laughs> you can't be imparted by a man you have not accorded fatherhood. No. You can't be imparted. Because his father means source. Father means the releaser, the producer, the source. Impartation is activated by the acknowledgement of your mentor as a father, a spiritual father. It has to, not just when you say in your mouth, no, it has to, it has to, it has to grow in your spirit. It means you relate with him in that level of fatherhood. By respect, by service, by honor. So it's not just saying father in the mouth, but it grows from your spirit man because you have already accredited him in that level and status. It forces something out of him. It forces what you need out of him. 
There's a release from him to you. Kela do Savagayanda. My father, my father. Ooh, the thing came. And he took it. With it, he parted Jordan to do the obstruction that would have hindered him from going back to his ministry. The hindrance and the obstructor was parted asunder. And when he got there, what did he do? He took the matter of the father. I said, where's the God of my father? I dedicate everyone privileged to listen to me this morning. May the grace of God I carry respond to your desperate need in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Kuvarando seke palagaya kila goske papara. May the grace of God I carry respond to your urgent need in the name of Jesus Christ. In that area where you have been delayed, you've been praying, fasting, struggling, and then they look, the problem is protracted. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. May that yoke of delay, protracted delay, be destroyed from your life in the name of Jesus. I stand as a father figure for those who have accepted that platform and status of me over their life. To speak against the horror of this delay. Remember, Jacob cursed Reuben for what he did that was bad. Said Reuben, Thou shalt not excel. You will be unstable as water. Because of the evil you committed against me. You trespass. And that guy was reduced to smallness. The first son became smaller than the last. But there was a father that stepped on the platform of leadership. Who identified that this guy is being limited protracted delay. He couldn't expand. He couldn't increase. He couldn't move forward. But by the matter of fatherhood, Moses stood up in Deuteronomy to spoken. He said, let Reuben live and not die. He spoke from the platform of the spiritual father of the Israelites in the wilderness and he broke the curse. The delay was broken and Reuben sprung up again and took his rightful place as first. I speak in the name of Jesus over everything that have intimidated you, caged you small. Kiladoke parados. Litimama kakakwashi. Over every problem that are protracted, refuse to submit to prayer. You fasted, you sowed seed. You don't want to know the other. But this thing refused to go. Then I stand on the platform of my fatherhood. And I contend with the spirit. That has been tormenting you in that direction. I defeat that devil out of your life. I break the influence of that satanic force from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Le papa. Litutu parete, gimale ku karato. Every devil behind this protracted problem, I overthrow you from the life of my viewers today. Liteke perentaras, zuvina zuvina mananto ke kletoa. Every devil of poverty. That I've, that I've heard my viewers hostage. Every devil of poverty that I've made them small financially. As a spiritual father over these ones, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
I break your hold today from the life of my viewers. I break your influence today from their finances in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree in the name of Jesus the wisdom to prosper be released upon my sons and daughters. The wisdom to prosper be released upon my viewers. The wisdom to prosper be released upon those who are watching right now and those who will watch thereafter. In the name of Jesus, the connection to prosper may it be established for you. The link for prosperity be established for your prosperity in the name of Jesus. Though your beginning be small, you will not end small. Job 8, verse 7. Scripture cannot be broken. He said, though your beginning be small, but your later end should greatly increase. I speak into the spirit of smallness. I break your hold out of the life of my viewers. Every spirit of smallness that made them small in their ministry, that made them small in their anointing, that made them small in their finances, that made them small in the progress level of their fulfillment of destiny, that have caged them small. Moses said, let Reuben live and not die, and let not his men be few. Ah, it must not be few again. Let Reuben live and not die. The yoke of death is broken from your life. You will live and not die. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let Reuben live and not die. I declare upon that man, that woman, listening to me this morning, the yoke of death is broken from your life. It's broken from your loved ones. The yoke of death is broken from your children. He's broken from your spouse. He's broken from members of your ministry. The yoke of death is broken in the name of Jesus. Let Reuben live and not die. Let not his men be few. I declare in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual force holding you hostage, making you small in all you do, making you small in all you do. I break the yoke of smallness. He kiratata bigudamuka la gozea. Whatever is operational in your life that have reduced you to smallness, I defeat that power. I break the yoke of your life. I defeat that stronghold in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Li garanto ri kafaranta. Li geklindu zuvurante le kepo. Li teterentara barango si prata. La katikula gavarando ske. Whatever made you small. Li ta te kete. Li kako. Ne te ri kakara. I break them out of your life. Any companionship. Relationship that made you small. Whosoever entered your life that reduced you to this smallness, I send them out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It was spoken of the traders who were going to Nineveh, who were going to Tarshish. They had so much goods for their business. So much. The ship was filled up. But Jonah was a part of that journey. And before they got to their destination, they have lost all. They began to throw them away. They became small. The goods were reduced to smallness. Why? Jonah was there. I don't know who is in your life that has brought this smallness. Who entered your life that made you small. I catch them and I send them out of your life in the name of Jesus. Whosoever entered your congregation that made your congregation small, I send them out of your congregation in the name of Jesus. Whosoever entered your finances that made your finances small, 
I save the mark of your finances in the name of Jesus. Whosoever entered your marriage that made your marriage small, I save the mark of your marriage in the name of Jesus. Kina mo balate, kila gaga lusu vita ta, liglen kupos keta ta, na ba duri varake lito pe. I pray for my viewers, as many as are sick in their body. Now, Rito Penta, I feel the oil of, of healing on my head right now. Get ready to be healed. Every sickness that have reduced you to smallness, every disease in your body, every spirit of diabetes, I bind that devil, I catch you, I send you out of my viewers in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of hypertension, I bind you today. I send you out of the life of the viewers. Everyone participating in this conference, I send you out of their life in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of prostrate enlargement, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I send you out of their life in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of importance, I send you out of their life in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of cancer, I send you out of their life in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of partial blindness, I bind you and I send you out of their life in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of tumor, I root you out of their life in the name of Jesus. Every disease in the brain, in the name of Jesus, I send you out. Every sickness in the blood, every sickness in the bone, arthritis, I banish you out of their body in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of disease or pile, I send you out of their body in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of skin disease, I send you out of their body in the name of Jesus. Every migraine, sleeplessness, insomnia, I cast you out of their life in the name of Jesus. Every spirit, le kuparara, of inherited disease from their parents, I send you out of their life in the name of Jesus. Kelebabosh. Zuvananke le kapraya. Natararus. Kipapelete. Barandoli geblede. Se kupare. Let Ruben live and not die. And let his men not be few. I release you for increase. Ne kulababele tata. I release you for increase. Le tu paru suvara. I release you for increase. This July is my bed month. It's the month of my birthday. And I feel like praying for you today. Keluta derus. Now as my birthday gift to you. This is my month of bed. And I declare increase for you. The scripture said, as the number of your days are, so shall your strength be. That is Deuteronomy 33 verse 25. As the number of your days are, so shall your strength be. I declare for every new day you see, so shall you be increased in your experiences. For every new day you enter, so shall you enter and increase. Financial increase. Spiritual increase, increase in the peace of your home, increase in the well-being of your children, increase in your spiritual life, increase in your passion for souls, increase in your fire of prayer, increase in your passion for fasting, increase in your passion for the study of the word of God, increase in your passion for soul winning. Iligubabarantoke, as the number of your days are, so shall your strength be. I declare for every new day you see, as an increase over the past day, so shall it lead you to increase in all the goodness and all the good desires of your heart. Increase in the morning, increase in the noonday, increase in the evening, increase in the night. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Kabela goes kave. Baranto le babela gle. Kerevalente negle gle. 
Mama luto vena gledo baratos. Ni tatara greske la gletete. Ama rosso varale ke tu vale kata. Ne la glados kovo. I fararanta la bosh. Vi ne glede ne. Ala kose vale taka. Please, if you have not shared this broadcast, it's the best time to share the broadcast. Please press the share button. Let somebody know that the program is midway. Prayer and worship conference 2023. Your life will never be the same again. You are about to testify. I see many testifying of the healing they got from this, this broadcast. Freedom increase is coming your way. Kabolanta logo vre tata. The yoke of protracted problem is broken. Namados kefara. You are entering your season of testimony. You are entering your season of testimony. Though your beginning was small, then the later part of this year shall increase. In the later part of this year that begins with July, I declare increase upon you. In the month of August, increase. In the month of September, increase. In the month of October, increase. In the month of November, increase. In the month of December, increase. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Matthew 6, verse 34, Jesus spoke in the last phrase there. He said, Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What he's saying that there are so much evil in every day. Sufficient enough. So don't bother about the evil that is coming. The evil that may happen tomorrow. The evil that may happen next week. The evil that may happen next month. He said, don't worry yourself. Take no thought about that. Face today. Because the evil that will happen today is enough, is sufficient. Every day have sufficient evil. So don't bother yourself about the evil that you are expecting in, in the future. Don't let that one trouble you. To kill, it will kill you. Remove your mind from the likely evil your mind is thinking about. Focus on today. Said the problem and the evil of every day is sufficient. Then I tell you in the name of the Lord, you will be exempted from the evil of today. I speak over your life as God's servant. I declare in the name of Jesus, no matter how many, no matter how many evil the devil have organized for today, you are exempted from all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are exempted from the death roll. The list of those that must die today. Your name is removed. In the name of Jesus. The list of those that must have accident today. Your name is removed. In the name of Jesus. The list of those that will be rushed to the hospital. Because of affliction. Sudden attack. Your name is removed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kina lo pari. Kivananta tata. You will not be a part of today's evil. In the, oh my God. Sakaya. I just felt his presence rushing in a heavier way. I say it again. You will not be a part of today's evil. In the name of Jesus. When they are taking records of those who had evil experience today, your name will not be in the list. When they are documenting names of those who had catastrophic evil experience today, your name will not be there. In the name of Jesus, rather your name will be in the list of the testifiers. Those who will say, blessed be today, for this is the day that the Lord has made. He brought joy and gladness to me. I declare the name of the Lord by the end of today. You will be a testifier. You will be a testifier. You will be a testifier. You will be a testifier of the faithfulness of God of the goodness of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I 
I was just led by the Holy Spirit to pray for you today. Please believe this prayer. Listen to it over and over again and begin to declare amen over all the prophetic prayer because it will happen like that. You need to watch this broadcast again and again to appropriate the prophetic prayers to yourself with an amen. You listen to it again and take it by an amen. When we were teaching worship, I told you this, worship secures your exemption from evil. Now, worshiping God is one way by which you are exempted from the calamity that is prevalent in your domain. The, way, the best way to separate yourself from the evil experiences that others may encounter is by worship. I give you, I give you a scripture which you mustn't forget. In the book of Genesis 46, verse number 28. Genesis 46, verse number 28, talking about Jacob. When he was going to, e to Egypt to see his son, Joseph, who has been enthroned as prime minister of a strange land. The Bible spoke in that verse 28. He said, Judah. He sent Judah. He sent Judah ahead to direct his face to go share. This scripture is very, very prophetic. So very deep. He sent Judah. To direct him to Goshen. Three key words there. One is Judah. The other one is direction. The last one is Goshen. Of course, let me begin with Goshen. Goshen is a location within the territory of judgment. Evil experiences. In Egypt. When God began to pour the ten plagues of judgment upon the whole land of Egypt, yet Goshen was also inside Egypt, but exempted from the judgment. That's how you are going to be. It doesn't matter the evil that comes upon the world, permitted catastrophe that God allows to be. You will be exempted. You will not be a part of it. The popular sicknesses and the popular diseases happening now, you will not be a part of it. The popular economic crisis and poverty ravaging the whole globe, you will not be a part of it. That means Goshen. But now in this scripture, we were, we were, we were, we were total on how to enter Goshen. How do you enter Goshen? You enter Goshen by divine direction. By divine direction. You enter Goshen by divine direction. He said, he sent Judah to give him direction to Goshen. So you need direction to operate in such a way that you will not be a part of the evil of the judgment prevalent in your domain and in your season. Now there could be things happening and God will just give you direction. Stay at home today. Because evil is about to happen. And you just get that direction to stay at home. And as you start, you'll be hearing the news what happened for those who went out. So go share means separated from judgment, separated from evil occurrences. But it happened by divine direction. And that direction happens by Judah. Oh. Judah is the one that produces direction. Direction is what gives you escape from judgment. 
Goshen is escape, exemption from judgment, from evil experiences. That no matter the evil that happens in wherever you are, you will be exempted. You will not be a part of the evil. That is Goshen. But Goshen happens by divine direction. And how does direction come? It comes by Judah. He said, Judah, he sent Judah ahead that he may give him direction to Goshen. <laughs> wow. So to have divine direction, you must be a Judean. Judah means praise. Judah means worship. Judah means celebrating the dignity of God. Judah means appreciating God, acknowledging God. So I want to advise and admonish you. No matter the evil prevalent in today and in your season, you can be exempted from all by divine direction. And how do you get that direction? By being a Judean. The inconstant praises. The inconstant worship. So what you do, apart from the money devotion, you punctuate your daily routine and activity. Just give yourself some few minutes. Meditate on God. Ponder on the greatness of God. Ponder on His power. This God that is your Father. Oh, browse through the activities of His mighty power. And then you worship Him. Knowing that He's around there with you. Said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You begin to appreciate Him. And as you are worshiping Him, as you are praising him, you begin to have drops in your heart. Idea, information, divinely downloaded. How you will escape from the trap and the evil of this season. Finally, I, did, I, I take you to this reference. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 12. An interesting scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 12 permit me to read from the amplified amplified version though a sinner does evil a hundred times does it matter how many wicked people evil people are around the world doing evil over and over and over again and are prolonged in his wickedness. Wickedness continues. Yet. Surely. I know that it will be well with those. Who reverently fear God. Who revere and worship him. Realizing his continual presence. He said does it matter the evil. Doesn't matter how prevalent the wickedness may be. Doesn't matter how dangerous the dangerous activity may be. He said there are some people that will escape. They have these three qualifications. One, they are those who fear God. Do you fear him? Do you fear him enough to go early to church on Sunday? Do you fear him enough? So begin the day with God, not with your handset, not with Facebook, not with YouTube, not with news. Do you fear him enough to give him what is due him in your income? Do you fear him enough to put him as first? Do you fear him enough to obey him over the commandment and the instruction he gave you to love your neighbor as yourself, to love him with all your heart? Do you fear him enough to abstain from that which is un unrighteous? These are the people that will escape. It doesn't matter the wickedness of the wicked. How numerous may be, how repeatedly they perform their wickedness. He said, look at the people that will escape. One, they are those that fear the law. They are those that fear the law. They are those that fear the law. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. May the fear of God be resident in your spirit. That it becomes your nature. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
May the fear of God be resident in your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, though the wicked ones, they even prolong in their days. They don't die. They perpetuate their wickedness over and over a hundred times because it never delays. There are those that will escape their wickedness. One, those that fear the Lord. Two, those that worship the Lord. Those that revere God. Those that spend time meditating on God. Three, those that acknowledge God's presence. Knowing that God is always around, watching them. God is there. God is not far. So that they can order their way right. And worship him frequently. And listen to him because they know he's there. Three qualification to escape him from the wickedness of the wicked. No matter how prevailing the wicked things may be, when you are in this category of the fear of God, of constant worship, and living in the constant consciousness of God's presence, you will celebrate. While others are crying, you will be testifying to the faithfulness of God. I love you. Today's broadcast has come to a close. All the prayers I pray for you, they will manifest for your testimony. I quickly want to make some announcements. December 14th, 15th and 16th, we are having international strategic prayer conference where we shall be ministering to the pastors, leaders, and everyone that cares to be a part of this conference. And we shall be laying hands on people impacting the participant with the grace of God in my life that you may soar like an eagle and operate in the supernatural 14th, 15th and 16th of December. Mark your calendar. For international participants, we connect you by Zoom. We connect you by Zoom. And we shall lay hand on you too by Zoom. Say, ah, you're going to do it. Then you better browse and find out what happened in Believers Ministries. When a minister from UK, the power of God locates them in Benin. And they are impacted in Benin. The anointing rests upon them through Zoom. Sicknesses disappear through Zoom. Demons cry out and run away. I'm in UK praying to go in Benin. That's the grace of God that God gave me. It's called transterritorial anointing. You heard me say it. It's called transterritorial anointing. It's called transterritorial anointing. It's the anointing that is not limited by territories. It crosses borders. I tell you, you will see God in action. December 14 to 16. How the power of God will go through from beneath to whatever country you are. You are registered from, and you will see the greatness of God's impartation. And God will zoom you into supernatural dimension when you begin to operate with grace. Now, the, the, the coordinator is Pastor Dr. Remy Yesuf. Pastor Dr. Remy Yesuf. The number will be on the screen, you can contact him. The registrar is Pastor Peter Feiji. The number also will be on the screen. You can contact him to register. Glory to God. All those in diaspora, $20, 20 euro, 20 pounds is your registration fee. And then registration has started. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now we also have, um, we want you to understand that um, the Believers International School of Prayers and Demonstrative Ministry is still on every second Saturday. The school section is on by 8 o'clock in the morning. Pastor J.D. Akwejuno 
is the principal of the school. And I minister through Zoom also to the students. Quickly, as we close up this broadcast, remember, on the 16th, this coming Sunday is my birthday. And I have a prophetic word for everyone that before I see my 70th birthday, which is next year, there will be no evidence of the protracted problem that you have seen again in your life. Before I run this program again next year, when I'll be 70, and when I'll be thanking God for my 50 years in ministry, I declare that you will be a testifier. That's why on this birthday occasion, I'm stopping that protracted problem. So when next year we'll be having my birthday, you'll be testifying to the glory of God. On Sunday, I'll be giving God thanks for another year. Glory to God. 49 years preaching this gospel. I dedicate you to God. And every good thing that God has ever done for me, may he find you to do it for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. These 50 years of ministry, every good thing that God has done for me in ministry, for every pastor that is viewing this broadcast, every ordained minister, I dedicate this my birthday to you. That God will do for you every good thing he has done for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. That the same hand of God that lifted me up to this level. May that hand find you for your lifting. May that hand find you for your lifting. May that hand find you for your lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will not die before your time. You will fulfill your destiny. In Jesus glorious name. Amen. This once again, let me remind you to send, a, to share this broadcast. And if you have not sold your seed of the conference offering, you are free to do so. God bless you as you do. I'll see you tomorrow. We we'll continue with our teaching tomorrow. Another factor that can break persistent problem. Bye-bye.